Hey, what's up guys, Andy here. Today, I'm going to teach you how to integrate Spring Boot with JUnit 5. So, JUnit 5, the official release is almost out. It's scheduled for the third quarter of 2017. And I figured, let's get a heads up on this and see how we use it with Spring Boot. Since Spring Boot's going to have official support for it uh, when the Spring Framework 5.0 is going to roll out. So, that'll be Spring Boot 2.0. But, you know, most people are not using that version. So we're, I'm going to show you how to use that uh, JUnit 5 with Spring Boot 1.5 that uses Spring Framework 4.3. Most of us are, are using that version. So um, I'm going to show you also how to resolve parameters dynamically into your test method. So, for example, if we take a look here... Um, uh, this uh, example with uh, an auto wired field or parameter inside your test method, right? So that's something that you don't have when using JUnit 4 or even Spring with JUnit 4. Okay, so auto wiring directly into a test method parameter, that's brand new. So this gives us a whole new level of auto wiring or dependency injection inside our test method parameters. So I'm going to show you first of all how to just get the ball rolling with a simple unit test here. Now this is as, as, as low level or as easy, as simple as you can get for a JUnit 5 unit test, okay? So first off, we're using a runner. So we're using the JUnit platform runner. So obviously, this guy over here is going to allow us to run our JUnit 5 tests. However, it's a bit of a workaround for now because JUnit 5, there's a lot of IDEs and build tools that don't have native support for it just yet. The only one that comes to mind right now is IntelliJ. They have support for JUnit 5. But for example, right now I'm using NetBeans and they don't have built-in support yet. Uh, so you're going to have to use the JUnit platform runner in order to run your JUnit 5 test on top of a platform that supports JUnit 4 architecture. Okay, so that's what you got to do to make it work. So it's kind of like making JUnit 5 work with JUnit 4. Once the built-in support rolls out, this is going to change. Now, if you want to run down on exactly what has changed in JUnit 5, what's new, what are all the annotations, what are all the asserts, all that kind of stuff, I've already come up with a tutorial on that, right? If you go ahead and go to my a YouTube site, which you're already on, right? Uh, you go to this guy here, JUnit5, and once you click on him, you'll see that I cover a high-level architectural uh, overview there. I cover what's kind of different between JUnit4, JUnit5. I show you how to run tests, um, you know, in, in a native ID support, uh, until native ID support is available, which I'm actually going to show you in this first unit test coming up in one minute and how to mix four and five, okay? So that as well, I'm gonna show you. And the JUnit examples is really the meat of that tutorial, right? So I would say it's kind of a prerequisite if you haven't seen any JUnit 5, is to go check out this video first before you come and check out uh, the video that I'm doing right now because the video that I'm doing right now is really going to concentrate on uh, parameter resolvers, right? Getting that dynamic dependency injection into our test methods like I showed you. Now I recommend the first time you kind of try to integrate JUnit 5 in your project to run this kind of simple unit test. And the reason why is if this doesn't work then you know forget about going uh, you know in the more complicated direction. So here we got our workaround to get JUnit 5 to work and here we simply have our uh, at test that we're used to seeing. And that at test obviously has different imports here dealing with JUnit Jupyter. Now, if you're wondering why it's called Jupiter, and I did for actually quite a bit of time, it's because Jupiter is the fifth planet uh, from the sun. And so five, right? JUnit five, J Jupiter five. So that's how they came up with that name there. If not, you're scratching your head. Now, obviously, this is a bogus test. But uh, if I actually run this test and it passes, then I have the assurance that I've set up things properly for uh, JUnit 5, right? And there, everything is cool there. So now we can start going and looking at the good stuff, right? So let's take a look at uh, Spring with uh, JUnit 5. Actually, I have one with without JUnit 5. And without JUnit 5, let's take a look. You see here that this is just um, 
uh, uh, your 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 basic JUnit 4 test here. I'm using a Spring Runner. Now the Spring Runner, if you've worked with Spring Boot before, it this this one is just an alias for Spring JUnit 4 Class Runner, and this is an integration test. So I'm using the Spring Boot test annotation. That's kind of newish for Spring Boot. It allows you to bootstrap your application context and amongst many other things in a um, Spring Boot environment. So that, that's the key word, right? Spring Boot environment. It allows you to really scale down the number of annotations that you use and you could even start an embedded web server and all that kind of stuff. If you really want more details on that annotation, uh, this is actually for an integration test, then I suggest you go take a look at my video that is titled Spring Boot and then it says integration test slice and dice okay so i go through all that so here this is the normal stuff that we're used to seeing right we're auto wiring to a field nothing new there that's that would have worked anyhow right so we're using uh j unit 4 here you can see the fully qualified name of the import and so here i'm just asserting this is not null if i run this and this is how you know you're used to running an integration test let's say with j unit 4 everything works just fine. But what we can't do is the following, right? Let me uncomment this guy over here. I can't run this JUnit 4 test and auto wire the employee in here. If I even try to do this, it's not even gonna work. I'm gonna get an initialization error actually, you see? And it said, hey, that method should have no parameter. So this is a restriction that we have in JUnit 4 and especially with using uh, spring right so you would think oh spring will allow us to do that somehow with some magic but no that's not the case there's no extension point for spring to take advantage of yet so let's see right now okay how we're going to take advantage of that so if i go to my spring with j unit 5 integration test this is the same thing and we need our workaround to get j unit 5 to work i'm bootstrapping the whole environment for an integration test and this guy uh very important JUnit 5 allows for an extens uh, extensible architecture, right? So before in JUnit 4, we're only allowed to use like an extension point, like um, like an at rule or an at class rule, right? Once on a test class. <clears throat> so let's say you want to use kind of a spring rule and you want to use like a Makito rule for mocks, you couldn't do that, right? Now the game has changed and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that. First off, we have a spring extension. So if I wanna have this nice auto wiring capability or uh, in my constructor, uh, you can see here my constructor of my test method, right? My test class got an auto wired there. I also have an auto wired in a kind of life cycle annotation like at before each, which is equivalent to the at before in JUnit 4. And they have the other ones there. Um, at after each, at uh, before all, at after all. They're all, they all have their equivalents to JUnit 4. Again, I explain all that in that other tutorial that you really should watch first, okay? Now, you'll notice as well that in this test method, I'm auto-wiring straight into the method itself. And over here, I'm also doing the same thing, but I'm using the at qualifier and at value. So I have a lot more options. I can dynamically resolve these dependencies at runtime. And that's thanks to something called a resolver okay so this spring extension point here actually implements this resolver and let's take a go let's take a look at that right so here it is it's actually called a parameter resolver specifically now spring extension spring extension rather uh, implements many different types of um, interfaces but the one that we're going to concentrate on is parameter resolver that's where the magic happens to allow us to resolve our parameters dynamically at runtime. There's two methods that it implements. So let's go down here. There should be one called supports and resolve, okay? So supports returns a Boolean and says, if you've annotated on your constructor, right, the at auto wired annotation, I support that, it'll return true, okay? Or if you, on your parameters of your methods, right, your parameter is um, auto-wired with these three annotations, so auto-wired, qualifier, and value, like I just showed you moments ago, I support that too, so it'll return true. Now, if that returns true, like in our case in the test, it'll call the resolve method. Now, the resolve method is where the actual runtime parameters are getting resolved. You see here it's using Spring's application context, 
and it's using the application context to resolve the dependency at runtime. So behind the scenes, it's actually interacting with Spring's test context test context framework. Try to say that fast many times, <laughs> right? And um, you know j that's just normal dependency injection that occurs from Spring's application context. So everything in the end of the day, when you look at this code, interacts with Spring's test context framework. So that's how the magic is happening here. And that's why I'm able to get the auto wired in the constructor working or in all these life cycle methods. I didn't put all four of them. One's, one's enough to get the point across. And then I just check here that the constructor uh, dependency injection worked. I make sure that it's you know not null and I do a little test there. And I do the same thing with an auto wired of an employee. And the qualifier, if you're wondering where this is coming from, the project uses a company, okay? which takes in a name and you can add an employee, you know, kind of a list of employees or a set of employees and every employee has a role. So what I've done here in this test configuration class, which is automatically taken up uh, uh, because it's an at configuration class. Remember I said that um, this guy here has a whole bunch of fairy dust in it and it'll automatically pick it up, has like a context configuration capability in there. So it picks this guy up for us. And what I've done is I've come up with a couple of spring beans, one being the primary one here, an employee Homer Simpson, which we, we don't know what kind of role he has, right? Nobody knows what the hell he does, uh, but he's got a good salary. And so we return him. And we also have an employee MVP Java. There's my name, Andy. So, and I gave myself, uh, I had to give myself more than Homer, right? And here we got a company with Tesla. So I'm eventually gonna add an employee to this company and this whole thing gets picked up and I'm able to test it out in my class over here, my test class. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting the employee uh, MVP Java, I'm qualifying it. And I'll also make sure I'm using JUnit 5's assert all, okay, which is a really nice way to group together a whole bunch of assertions and get wicked feedback from it. If only one of them fails, everything still gets printed out, right? Not only the failure, but everything after. So I really like the assert all in JUnit 5, which again, I go through in that other video. And so over here, I also have the add value annotation. Now, what's nice about the add value annotation is you could always take advantage of, you know, simple extraction of parameters, but you can also take advantage of spell expressions, right? And I didn't put that here, but just know that you can actually go out and, and use the whole spell expression stack there to inject whatever you want. All that is still supported. So where does this guy come from? Comes from the application.property. So I'm giving a maximum salary of 100,000 to uh, any employee that joins the company, right? So I'm just making sure that I'm not making more than that over here when I'm saying get salary. And so that'll get injected too. At the end, I'm just making sure that the normal run of the mill dependency injection works at the field level, right? So I'm talking about this guy over here, which I showed you in that other example. This should always work anyhow, but we're really interested in this, right? So if I test this file over here, I should get a couple of tests that pop up and they should all work just fine, right? So I had four in there and all of them, I was making sure that they were null and I actually had some logical checks in there as well. So everything is working, this is beautiful. This is how we go ahead and we get dynamic resolving of our parameters at runtime. And again, all of this is, is, is thanks to Spring extension. So how about I show you something even cooler than this, right? How about I show you one uh, integration test that has two extension points, right? Now, again, we're not limited to just one like JUnit4. In this case here, I'm using our Spring extension, but I'm also using our Makito extension. So check this out over here. So in this method here, check multiple parameter resolvers, not only am I auto-wiring your company, but I'm auto, in a sense, auto-wiring a mock too. I'm injecting a mock inside the method parameter, right? So a company adds an employee, but I'm actually injecting the mock here and this returns true or false depending if it was properly added to the set okay so this is really cool now i can have both of these inside the same method and i could also opt to put them all on one line okay if i wanted to this is a preference or let's say you had 10 test methods right and out of those 10 te me test methods <laughs> i'm in trouble speaking it's very early in the morning i wanted to just put one of them, uh, this, this Mikito extension at the method level because only one of them had a mock or something like that, kind of scale down the scope, right? I could do that. So really it's all about picking the preference. Uh, I like just putting them on the top for, the, for, 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 the, for this example, but I wanted to show you 
uh, the other options there, right? Now this changes the game, right? Because what happens is when you're looking at integration tests, well, let me just show you that it works first of all, right? If I inject this, just one test and uh, the mock will get properly injected and there we go, right? Everything is cool. Now you might wondering where does this mock uh, Makito extension come from? It's actually not available right now uh, from a public repository. I had to go on GitHub. There's a guy named Mark Phillip uh, that actually, it's just a one class. Uh, I actually took it and I downloaded it and put it in the project directly. And uh, if you're interested in, in knowing more about, you know, where to go for the link to go uh, and, and get this code, well, one, you could go to my GitHub account and I, I have a section on top here that I um, give reference to Mark Phillip, or you can go to my blog and I also have a link to him there, okay? So eventually it'll be available publicly, but for now I had to go get it, right? Because obviously we want something that's, you know, really cool and powerful like this. There's nothing stopping you from, you know, coming up with your own parameter resolver though, right? It's only those two uh, methods that you have to implement. So it's pretty cool. Now let's continue on here and I want to show you, uh, if we go back to our original test, what kind of, you know, the game that this changes, right? What, what's going on here is we have a much more local scope happening in terms of dependence injection. I like this because I don't have to scroll up, find out, you know, where this is coming from. Is it coming in the constructors? Is it field? Is it an add before method? It's all localized. It's all neat and tidy. Um, anything more local than this would be like a local variable inside, right? So I like that because it's much less of a cognitive load. Everything is there in one place and it, I find it reads better. Okay. So I'm really for this kind of, um, level of dependency injection. I think JUnit 5 really did a good job with their uh, extension architecture and, uh, obviously spring, uh, took a very good advantage of that. Okay. Now, if you also wanted to take, um, a look at a unit test and have that unit test, uh, again, use JUnit 5, okay? Now, this case here, it's not an integration test. So I have to do a little bit more work to go get my test config class. I'm using a context configuration, but look at this, right? I'm using the Makito extension here, and I just wanna go in there and inject a mock. So if you're using unit tests with mocks, right? You can use uh, this extension to make things easier for you, and you could also use it in your integration test, depending on you know what kind of stuff that you're doing. So that's pretty cool. So now you know how to dynamically resolve parameters inside your test methods. If you love these kind of videos and you want to see more videos, not only on um, JUnit or uh, Spring, I got a whole bunch of those, but a whole bunch of other videos, then I recommend that you subscribe to my channel. It's absolutely free, right? Um, you're not going to get billed with anything. And uh, that way you'll get notified when all these videos come out, which come out quite frequently, which is nice. Okay. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching and uh, I'll be getting the next one ready. Ciao.